Welcome to module 2 of chapter 3. In this module, we are going to discuss an important arithmetic function called Euler phi function. Euler phi function is also called Euler totient function. Euler totient function counts number of positive integers which are less than or equal to n and relatively prime to n. Euler introduced this function to generalize Fermat's little theorem. We will see various properties of Euler phi function in this module. So, in module 2, we are going to see properties of Euler phi function. The objectives of uh, this module are exploring various properties of Euler phi function. So, first uh, Euler phi function is defined like this. For n belongs to n, phi of n denote the number of positive integers not exceeding n that are relatively prime to n. Mathematically, one has phi of n is equal to m such that one is less than or equal to m is less than or equal to n and GCD of m comma n is equal to 1. So, cardinality of this is phi of n. So, for example, n equal to 1 then phi of 1 is 1, n equal to 2 phi of 2 is 1, it is because num the numbers which are relatively prime to 2 are only 1, for 3 it is again 2, for 7 it is 6, it is because the numbers which are relatively prime to 7 are 1. 2, 3, 4, 5 up to 6 the and whereas, uh, phi of 8 is 4, it is because the numbers which are relatively prime to 8 are 1, 3, 5 and 7. Similarly, phi of 10 is 4. So, okay, and another way to define phi of n is, phi of n is equal to d summation d is equal to 1 to n, 1 by g c d of n comma d. Okay, so, here the, that box represents greatest integer function. So, whenever g c d is 1, then we will get 1 by 1, we will get value 1. Whenever g c d of n comma d is more than 1, then 1 by that number is 0 point something. So, we are going to get 0. So, this is another way to define phi of n and also this the same thing can be represented like this. Summation, but taken from a equal to 1 to n, but a g c d of a comma n equal to 1, both are same, all the definitions are same with different ways to represent. If n is equal to 2 power k for some k greater than or equal to 1, then every odd integer less than 2 power k is relatively prime to n. So, hence phi of 2 power k is equal to 2 power k minus 1. So, this is easy to see. So, it will give a nice intuition uh, of the definition of phi phi of 2 power k equal to 2 power k minus 1. So, now we will extend this to all prime powers. So, let p be an odd prime number and k greater than or equal to 1, then phi of p power k equal to p power k minus p power k minus 1, which is also equal to p power k if I take common, then it is 1 into 1 minus p, 1 into p power k into 1 minus 1 by p. So, the proof goes like this, as p is a prime number, the number co prime to p power k, if it is not divisible by, if it is not divisible by p, thus the numbers from 1 to p power k that are factors of, that are factors of p are 1 into p, 2 into p, 3 into p and so on p power k minus 1 into p. That is the number of positive integers between 1 and p power k that are not co prime to p power k are p power k minus 1 in number. They are 1 into p, 2 into p and so on p power k minus 1 into p. Remaining are co prime to p. So, I have to subtract this. So, total there are p power k are there out of p power k, we have p power k minus 1 are not relatively prime. So, if we subtract that, then we will get exact answer. That is, p power k minus p power k minus 1 are relatively prime to p power k. So, hence we have phi of p power k is equal to p power k minus p power k minus 1. Now, we evaluated phi at 2 power k as well as phi at p power k for all odd primes. So, once if we evaluate the phi function if you show phi is multiplicative, then it, we can know the values of phi at all natural numbers n. So, we are going to show that phi is multiplicative function. 
that is we need to show that phi of m into n is equal to phi of m into phi of n whenever m comma n gcd is equal to 1. Um, but it is easy to show that if one of the numbers m or n is equal to 1. So, let us assume that both m comma n is greater than or equal to 2 or positive integers with the gcd of m comma n is equal to 1. So, now we are going to define two sets. Let a is defined like this a a is capital A is equal to small a such that a is lies in between 1 and m n and g c d of a comma m n is equal to 1 and b c the set b c is defined as ordered pairs b comma c such that 1 is less than or equal to b is less than or equal to m comma 1 is less than or equal to c is less than or equal to n and g c d where g c d of b comma m is equal to g c d of c comma n is equal to 1 b 2 sets. Okay. Now, in order to show phi is multiplicative, we define these two sets A and the set B C. By definition, the number of elements in A is phi of m, a, m into n. It is because A is a collection of all integers less than m n and which are relatively prime to m into n. So, the cardinality of A is phi of m into n. We will now count the number of elements in B, B C, the set B C. We observe that for each B in the ordered pair B C for each B, 1 less than or equal to B less than or equal to M satisfying G C D of B comma M is equal to 1. The choice of C satisfying 1 less than or equal to C less than or equal to N and G C D of C comma N equal to 1 are independent. So, hence moreover there are phi, m, phi of m choices for b, phi of n choices for c, hence total number of elements in b c is exactly equal to phi of m into phi of n. So, the cardinality of a is phi of m into n, the cardinality of b c is phi of m into phi of n. So, once if you able to prove that the cardinality of a equal to cardinality of b c, then we are done. So, for that we are going to show that the sets a and b c are equivalent. Hence, we need to show that there is a bijection between the sets A and the set B C. To do so, recall that G C D of A comma M n equal to 1, if and only if G C D of A comma M equal to 1 as well as G C D of A comma N is equal to 1. It is because A comma M n equal to 1 means there is no primes which are common to A and M n. So, automatically there are no primes common to A and M as well as no primes common to A and N. So, the GCDs are going to be 1. Thus, the now we define the map f from A to B C defined by f of A is equal to A mod M and also A mod N. So, this is well defined as GCD of M comma N equal to 1 by Cheney's remainder theorem implies that this map is 1 on and on 2. Here we are applying Cheney's remainder theorem. Hence, the two sets a and B C have same number of elements. Thus, phi of m into n is equal to phi of m into phi of n whenever G C D of m comma n is equal to 1. Therefore, phi is a multiplicative function. The following result directly follows from above two results. The, this says that if let n is greater than or equal to 2 be a positive integer, if n is equal to p 1 power k 1 into p 2 power k 2 and so on p r power k r is the prime factorization of n into distinct primes, then phi of n is equal to, since phi is multiplicative, so phi of n is equal to phi of p 1 power k 1 into phi of p 2 power k 2 and so on phi of p r power k r, but where of phi of p 1 power k 1 is p 1 power k 1 minus p 1 power k 1 minus 1 phi of p 2 power k 2 is p 2 power k 2 minus p 2 power k 2 minus 1 and so on. Phi of p r, p r power k r is p r power k r minus p r power k r minus 1. So, here if I take p 1 power k 1 into p 2 power k 2 and so on p r power k r common, then we are going to get n times 1 minus 1 by p 1 into 1 minus 1 by p 2 and so on 1 minus 1 by p r. So, we got phi of n very nicely or otherwise you can say that phi of n by n is equal to product of 1 minus 1 by p where p is all where p is varying over all prime divisors of n. 
now we see an example of computing the value of phi. So, compute the value of phi of 666 that is we need to evaluate phi of 666 which is equal to phi of 2 into 3 square into 37. 2 into 3 square into 37 is a prime factorization of 666. Since phi is multiplicative, so phi of uh, 2 into 3 square into 37 which is equal to phi of 2 into phi of 3 square into phi of 37. So, r this is also equal to phi of 2 is equal to 1. So, phi of 3 square is equal to uh, 3 square minus 3 and so on. We So, we can after simplifying we are going to get 666 into 1 minus 1 by 2 into 1 minus 1 by 3 into 1 minus 1 by 37. Here if you look at the evaluation of phi of n is very easy. Just n times just we need to find out all the prime factors even exponents also not required. n times 1 minus 1 by prime 1, 1 minus 1 by prime 2 and so on 1 minus 1 by prime k the prime divisor. So, so this is equal to 616 which is equal to 6 cube. So, hence so this phi of 666 has a nice property phi of 666 is equal to 6 into 6 into 6. We defined the Euler phi function. We observed that with a simple observation phi of 2 power k equal to 2 power k minus 1. It is because all the integers which are odd are relatively prime to 2 power k that is why phi of 2 power k equal to 2 power k minus 1. Then we generalized this result to all odd, odd prime powers that is phi of 2 p power k equal to p power k minus p power k minus 1. Then later we showed that phi is a multiplicative function because that it is possible to know the phi, phi value at each and every natural number. We also given an example how to compute phi function. Now we will see few more properties of Euler phi function. Now we will see few more properties of Euler phi function. The first theorem in this regard is let n greater than or equal to 3 be a positive integer then phi of n is an even integer. Note that for any positive integer n greater than or equal to 3 is of the form 2 power k for some k greater than or equal to 2 r has odd prime factor. Hence, in either case phi of n is going to be even. So, let m comma n belongs to n then we have phi of m into n is equal to phi of m into phi of n into d by phi of d where d is a gcd of m comma n. Here as we know that phi is multiplicative then if gcd of m comma n is equal to 1 then d becomes 1 in that case phi of m n is equal to phi of m into phi of n. But here we are giving a more general result that is what is phi of m into n even m comma n gcd need not be 1. So, the proof goes like this phi of m n by m into n which is equal to all primes product of all primes p dividing m n into 1 minus 1 by p. This is just a definition of phi this we done in the previous result. So, this is equal to all product of all primes p dividing m into 1 1 minus 1 by p into product of all primes p dividing n into 1 minus 1 by p by product of all primes p dividing d. Since d is a greatest common divisor of m and n, so all we need to divide those common primes which are dividing both m and n. So, that is e, so divided by p divides d product 1 minus 1 by p which is equal to. So, as we aware that product of all primes p dividing m 1 minus 1 by p is nothing but phi of m by m. And similarly, product all primes p dividing n 1 minus 1 by p is nothing but p of n by n. And similarly, uh, product p divides d 1 minus 1 by p is nothing but phi of d by d. So, we have phi of m into n by m n which is equal to phi of m into phi of phi of m by n into phi of n by n by phi of d by d. So, which is equal to phi of m into phi of n into d by m n into phi of d. So, that is what the required thing we need to show. So, another interesting property is this let a comma b 
be natural numbers such that a divides b, then phi of a divides phi of b. This is another interesting property of Euler phi function. So, proof goes very easily. Uh, since a divides b, there exists c belongs to n such that b is equal to a into c. So, let us assume that d is equal to gcd of a comma c, then phi of b, it is because we need to show that phi of a divides phi of b, that means that we have to show that phi of b is equal to phi of a into something. So, that is why we consider phi of b value. So, phi of b is equal to phi of a into a c, which is equal to phi of a into phi of c into d by phi of d. This part we got from the previous result. So, which is equal to phi of a into phi of c times p divided c 1 minus 1 by p, you just we substituted the value of phi of c there and uh, phi of d value also p divides d 1 minus 1 by p. So, uh, that d gets cancelled, d, d, uh, phi of d by d value is this. So, at, at last now we have that phi of b is equal to phi of a into c times p divided c 1 minus 1 by p by product p divided d 1 minus 1 by p. So, but every prime that divides d also divides c, hence p divided c 1 minus product 1 minus 1 by p by product p divides d 1 minus 1 by p is a positive integer, hence phi of b is equal to phi of a into some positive integer, hence phi of a divides phi of b. So, we got the required result but it is easy to see that converse uh, is not true. One can give many examples. So, there are infinitely, uh, this, uh, this result also gives an example. There are infinitely many positive integers for which phi of n is equal to n by 3. That means, uh, uh, it takes uh, several times same value, phi of n is equal to n by 3. So, the proof is very simple. If n is equal to 2 power k into 3 power j, where k comma j are natural numbers, then by def, by definition or what we derived phi of n is equal to n times 1 minus 1 by 2 into 1 minus 1 by 3. So, we are going to get n by 3. So, easy to see. So, for all the all integers of the 2 power k into 3 power j, it is independent of k and j. So, there are infinite number, I can simply vary k and j value still I am going to get phi of n is equal to n by 3 only. So, there are infinite numbers which satisfies this property that phi of n is equal to n by 3. Similar to this, one can try some other results also. So, another important property is that if p is an odd prime and k greater than or equal to 2, then we have to show that phi of p, phi of p power k equal to p power k minus 2 into phi of p minus 1 whole square. This is easy to see. So, phi of phi of p power k which is equal to phi of phi of p power k value we know that is p power k minus p power k minus 1. So, if you take p power k minus 1 common phi of p power k minus 1 into p minus 1. Since p minus 1 and p power k minus 1 are relatively prime, so we are going to get phi of p power k minus 1 into phi of p minus 1. Again if you apply for p phi of p power k minus 1 then we are going to get p power k minus 2 into phi of p minus 1 whole square. So, we get a required part. Now, another interesting result is this, this is very useful result, n is equal to summation d divides n phi of d. So, the theorem states that for each positive integer n greater than or equal to 1, we have n is equal to summation d divides n phi of d. So, this theorem can be proved in different ways, we are giving a one proof here. For each divisor m of n, we define the sets a m is equal to all x such that 1 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to n, g c d of x comma n is equal to m and b m is defined as y such that 1 less than or equal to y less than or equal to n by m g c d of y comma n by m is equal to 1. So, these uh, a m and b m are defined for each positive divisor m of n. Then it is easy to see that a m partition the set 1, 2, 3 up to n. 
it is because gcd of uh, x comma n is one of the divisor of n so as uh, m varies over all divisors of n so a so a like a1 am and so on an that you their union is equal to entire set 1 2 up to n also note that for each x belongs to am we have that one by definition one is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to n and gcd of x comma n is equal to m hence there exist a y belongs to n such that x equal to m y since gcd of x comma n equal to m that means that m divides x so x equal to m y for some y where y is lies in between 1 and n by m and gcd of m y comma n is equal to m y is nothing but x so gcd of x comma n that is equal to m but gcd of m y n is equal to m if and only if gcd of y comma n by m is equal to 1 so hence we see that for every x belongs to m there exist a unique y belongs to n such that x equal to m y and where y lies in between 1 to n by m and gcd of y comma n by m is equal to 1 so this gives the correspondence between am and bm so we can define a mapping f from am to bm by f of x equal to y whenever x equal to m into y so it depends upon m since uh, the sets are am and bm that depends on m so the map also depends on the value of m the above argument implies that f is a bijective function but we know the cardinality of bm is exactly phi of n by m that is the definition of phi so we know that n is equal to since 1 to up to n is a partitioning a1 a, a, a m's partition 1 to up to n so n is equal to summation m divides n cardinality of am which is equal to m divides n cardinality of bm which is equal to m divides n phi of n by m which is equal to which is also equal to phi of summation m divides n phi of m as phi of n n by m m divides n is also equal to phi of n by m n by m divides n so another important result is phi of n is equal to n times summation d divides n mu of d by d that is the theorem says that for each positive integer n phi of n is equal to n times summation d divides n mu of d this is an important result given the relationship between Euler phi function and mobius function so proof goes like this let n equal to p1 power a1 p2 power a a2 and so on pr power ar be the fine factorization of n into distinct primes then phi of n by n we proved that phi of n by n is equal to product p divides n 1 minus 1 by p which is equal to i is equal to 1 to r product 1 minus 1 by p i so which can be written as if you simplify it we are going to get 1 minus summation 1 by p i plus summation 1 by p i into p j and so on minus 1 whole power r into 1 1 by p 1 p 2 and so on p r so this is nothing but summation d divides in mu of d by d this is easy to check it is because mobius function takes values either 1 or minus 1 or 0 but we are considering only distinct prime factor so we are going we have this result now another important result is let n greater than 2 be a positive integer then sum of all positive integers that are less than n and relatively prime to n is 1 by 2 times n into phi of n here we are adding all positive integers which are relatively prime to n which value is equal to which value also depends upon phi of n not only number of integers which are relatively prime to n sum also related to phi of n let a1 a2 and so on a phi of n be the positive integers less than n and they are relatively prime to n now we need to add all these numbers as gcd of a comma n equal to 1 if and only if gcd of n minus a comma n equal to 1 the two sets n minus a1 comma n minus a2 and so on n minus a phi of n and a1 a2 and so on a phi of n both are same hence a1 plus a2 plus and so on plus a phi of n is same as 
n minus a 1 plus n minus a 2 and so on plus n minus a phi of n. So, a 1 a 2 up, up to we have phi of n are there. So, which is equal to n times phi of n minus a 1 plus a 2 plus and so on plus a phi of n. So, if you bring a 1 plus a 2 plus and so on a, f this, uh, a, a phi n this side. So, we have we get the required result that is a 1 plus a 2 plus and so on plus a phi n is equal to n into a phi of n by 2. Since uh, usually we are taking n is greater than or equal to 2. So, when n equal to 2 case only phi of n is 1, in other cases phi of n is even. So, this is clearly n into phi of n by 2 is an integer. Now, we are going to look at important property. Since phi of n is less than n, whenever n is greater than 1, so it is natural to ask that for a given n, what is the smallest possible integer k such that p power k of n is equal to 1. So, this can be generalized in fact, if f is any arithmetic function, then f power k of n as a composition of f n times, that is f power k of n is f of f of f of n. So, we can define for general arithmetic function like this, let n be a positive integer and f is an arithmetic function, then order of n with respect to this arithmetic function f is denoted by order of f n is defined as the smallest positive integer m such that f power m of n equal to 1. Again here f power m means it is a composition f m times. So, for example, phi square of 4 that is phi of phi of 4, phi of 4 is 2, but phi of 2 is 1. So, phi square of 4 is 1. So, order of 4 with respect to phi is equal to 2. Let n be an odd part of integer, then order of phi of 2 n is also equal to order of n. Consequently, it is sufficient to consider only when n is even. It, it is easy to verify the result for exercise and generalize this result to arbitrary n also. So, here we are not giving the proof. So, if n equal to 2 power k, then order of n phi is equal to k. It is easy to check these results. When n is equal to 2 power k 1 into 3 power k 2, then order of n with respect to phi becomes k 1 plus k 2. When n is equal to 2 power k 1 into 5 power k 2, then order of n is equal to k 1 plus 2 k 2. So, now we will look at the uh, one of the important property of this phi function and sigma function. As we see that these behave very nicely, we will see that phi function, the phi value is more when n has less number of prime fact, less number of divisors, whereas sigma value is more when it has more divisors that is illustrated like this. Let n be a positive integer, then we observe the following. Whenever n has many prime factors, then n has many divisors that is sigma n is large relative to, relative to n. But in that case, there will be few numbers between 1 to n that are relatively prime to n. That is in this case, sigma n is small relative to n. On the other hand, if n has few prime factors, then sigma n is small relative to n, whereas there will be more numbers between 1 to n which are relatively prime to n or equivalently in this case phi of n is large relative to n. This argument suggests that the sequence sigma of n into phi of n by n square may be a bounded set. The following result shows exactly that. It says that sigma of n into phi of n by n square lies in between 1 by 2 and 1, it can assume value 1. So, theorem statement is let n belongs to n, then 1 by 2 is less than sigma of n into phi of n by n square, which is less than or equal to 1. Proof goes like this, let n is equal to p 1 power a 1 and so on p k power k k a k be the prime factorization of n into distinct primes, then we have sigma of n is equal to i is equal to 1 to k p a power a i plus 1 minus 1 by p a minus 1, which is equal to n times i is equal to 1 to k 1 minus p a power minus a i minus 1 by 1 minus p a minus 1. 
simply we took pi common. So, we got the dt is equal to that and phi of n is equal to n times product i is equal to 1 to k 1 minus 1 by p, p i. So, thus sigma of n into phi of n by n square which is equal to product i is equal to 1 to k 1 minus p i power minus a i minus 1. Hence, upper bound follows easily. Moreover, the equality occurs if and only if n is equal to 1. For lower bound, we have that i is equal to 1 to k 1 minus p i power a i minus 1 product, this product is greater than or equal to i is equal to 1 to k 1 minus p i power minus 2. Okay. Here what we done a i minus 1, a i value is at least 1. So, I can write it a i is replaced by 1. So, this is uh, that is why this product is greater than or equal to i is equal to 1 to k 1 minus p i power minus 2, which is greater than or equal to 2 to n. Since here we are only considering prime divisors, but now I am going from 2 to n. So, 1 minus 1 by t square, clearly this portion is greater than or equal to that and that simplified to n plus 1 by 2 n, clearly n plus 1 by 2 n is greater than 1 by 2. So, hence we got the required result. We noticed that phi of n is less than n for whenever n is greater than 1. So, for a given positive integer n, there exists a case such that phi power k of n is equal to 1, where phi power k means a con composition of phi k times. And we also observed that sigma of n into phi of n by n square is a bounded function. And we saw various other properties of Euler phi function. And it is interesting to look at alternative proofs for these, fun these properties of Euler phi function, just not confined to these proofs alone. So, for example, if you look at uh, elementary number theory by Burton, there we can find alternative proof for phi is multiplicative. That proof is gives a, a different intuition. So, with this we will end this module.